Our world, our environment, has undergone a metamorphosis. And it's more Kafka-esque than the concept of metamorphosis that we'd normally come to think of with uh, the environment. A caterpillar becoming a beautiful butterfly. We live in what's known as the Anthropocene Age. This is a time in which human activities have ultimately and inextricably altered our environment, our ecosystem, and arguably our climate. Our entire world has been affected by human activities. This is a metamorphosis of the most Kafkaesque, especially since the technical term does include the bureaucratic aspects of these transformations. So, uh, unfortunately, yes, that, that is the time in which we live. And we have to take considerations of our actions, our time on this earth, which is a very short time, especially in geological terms. When you think of all the years it's taken for our world to be what it has become, then our activities in a relatively short time having such an effect on our world around us. So, that being said, uh, I think I, I can bring it back up a little bit because that is our baseline. And that is one of the first concepts I, I think I want to touch on is the shifting baseline syndrome, where I suppose my understanding of this natural world that I was subject to it as a child has been altered. I cannot find the biodiversity, especially in a region such as the Lackawanna Valley, where we have been heavily affected by the anthracite mining industry. And that has caused a decrease in biodiversity, a lot of monocultures, a lot of barren wastelands. You'll see these calm dumps up and down the valley. This is the devastation caused by industrialization. Now, this is a part of our modern society. We must accept that. And what we need to do is find our place in that society that we can go through our own maybe personal metamorphosis, where we can become a more environmentally conscientious individual with your everyday choices, with your decisions on how you live your life. And we do subscribe to these societal norms, uh, expectations. Our demands on natural resources far exceed our actual needs. And much of that is based on what we collectively as a society accept and agree to as, well, that's perfectly fine. Our overconsumption of natural resources, which are limited, petrochemicals. We went through the anthracite fields here. Gas and oil companies are a major factor in our society. They have such influence over our everyday lives, policies that are established that ultimately affect our lives. And that is where you come in. You can make conscientious decisions every day to lead a more sustainable life. And sustainability is, is a critical aspect of our society that we need to address. Our current means of living far exceed the resources that are required to maintain this. Sustainability is reaching a level that may be sustained, maintained, and regenerated. I happened to come down here yesterday. Notice that we're in a wonderful building here with the architectural school. This is a LEED certified building. This building is designed with the greatest attention to sustainability, minimizing energy needs. It's uh, quite interesting in the fact that it has a geothermal cooling system for the building. Of course, it's not quite that warm out yet for the need for that, but uh, that is what we as a society should strive for. That kind of meditative thought, that decisive plan of action 
the goals that we must reach to maintain ourselves as a civilization. And that is why I think my biggest takeaway here with the theme of metamorphosis for everyone is to gain a slightly greater sense of your environmental impact on the world in which you live. And there are so many ways that can be done. Our consumption rate is beyond the means of any of our resources, and not just on the receiving end, where we mine, extract so many resources, such as fossil fuels. On the other end, the waste generated by these. And that is a consideration that sometimes we overlook, and it is critical, because we create so many plastic products, in particular, coming from the petrochemicals. And these items, we say, well, they get recycled. And uh, recycling is a flawed business model and a failed program. We simply produce more than any system could handle. And there is no market for it. The concept that these items would be purchased to be recycled or repurposed in more cases does not work. And once you've actually gone and think that you're doing good for the environment by recycling your water bottle, which, by the way, is one of the biggest scams, water, bottled water, it's tap water from somewhere else. So you're basically paying for tap water to be put in a plastic bottle, transported, which again is a, a strain on resources, and then you have this empty plastic bottle. Now, many people think, well, it's plastic, it's recyclable. Only a small percentage of these plastics are recyclable. And even the term recyclable, they're repurposed. And they are going to be in the ecosystem. We truly do not know how long. I mean, these microfibers have gotten into the food chain, into our systems, they're in the air. We are having an effect on this world that is incalculable and ultimately will alter our lives. Now, I became an activist because I believe in social justice. And I truly believe that a sustainable society is one of the most socially just societies in many ways from the fact that often Environmental impacts are felt on certain, the lowest uh, socioeconomic strata of our society. Uh, people of color are disproportionately affected because of the communities they live in and the fact that governmental regulations, which can be considered a dirty term by many, but they are necessary because capitalism seeks to maximize profits. And by doing so, often it's at the cost of our environment. Pollution comes in many forms. Actually, I think uh, content pollution is one that I just thought of this morning because, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we have light pollution. You don't realize how much your connection to the natural world has been affected you do not interact and engage with as many different species of flora and fauna because you have lost so many of them. You live in a house with a lawn. That's a monoculture. It is not a naturally occurring ecosystem. Biodiversity thrives when you have the proper plants that will attract pollinators. We see all these things in the news, and again, we, we say, yeah, we're aware. And that concept of being aware needs to be taken a little bit more to where it's your consciousness. You realize that these aspects of your existence can be altered slightly. If you go through this small change where you are more conscientious of your decisions every day, 
um, plastic uses. I have here, which I actually need because, well, this travel mug. How many coffee cups do we go through? If you see the average person's consumption for a year, you realize so many plastic single-use products. Sometimes people get plastic single-use bags, they walk outside the store and they just toss it aside. But that's expected as part of our society. And that is not a sustainable model that we should be following. If you can make little conscious decisions to bring shopping bags, your everyday little actions will have a greater impact. And this is uh, basically the accumulative effect. People think nothing of tossing a cigarette butt in the gutter, but one or two, it's litter. Thousands become pollution, and that actually is a problem uh, with contamination. I do work with the Lackawanna River Conservation Association, and I am, a, I am all about clean air, clean water, because that is the most basic, not just of human rights, but the right of every living creature and thing in this world. And through human activities during this Anthropocene age, which uh, can be measured in certain ways, the beginning of the industrialization, the industrial era, uh, the atomic era, and now we're pretty much living in the plastic age. So many products are overpackaged with unnecessary plastics because this is profitable for certain major corporations, certain uh, industries that have great interest that ultimately will affect how you perceive your life should be lived in. That needs to be reevaluated. There's a great law from the Iroquois Nation, the seventh generation concept, where rather than just plan out their planting for that year's harvest, they would think seven generations ahead and consider the impact of their actions. They were quite deliberate in their actions to not just look at the immediate future, but the long-term sustainability. And that probably, they were hit before they even realized it because they were living that sustainable model. And that is, I think, my takeaway for you all, is to think about all those little decisions you make every day and to try to advocate for a more sustainable society. I, I suppose that as an environmentalist, a big thing, a person who has concern and takes action. And yes, uh, most polls will show you most people are concerned about the environment. To take an action. And it doesn't have to be major steps. All these little incremental changes that we can make in our lives promote for our society will enable us to ultimately become a more sustainable society. And I think at this point in history, we cannot deny the effect that we are having on this thing here. That's our only home. And this is ultimately your world for a very brief moment. And without that foresight of those to come, we now are paying the tolls for the lack of foresight previous generations have had. And I am not from this area. When I moved here, when I saw the environmental devastation caused by the anthracite coal industry, it, again, I know about these things, I read them. Your sense of awareness becomes a sense of consciousness when you experience it, when you are interacting. And that's something important as well, I think, is that you all get out interacting more with nature. I think it'll help you to have a greater sense of appreciation for the natural world. And with that appreciation, maybe it'll help you to take more consideration for your actions that ultimately have such an impact on the world. Tomorrow, I'm going to have, I guess, uh, the, I don't, maybe the first, I don't know, 
TEDx, TEDx Walk, which is going to be a small hike along the Lackawanna River Heritage Trail here in Scranton. And along the way, we can look at some of the actual natural beauty that is still in the region, how that has been affected by past industrialization, the challenges that we face as a society going forth. And I think that that also can also help people. If you want to be an environmentalist, and I, I took issue with this term up here before, taking action, you don't have to be crazy and pulling tires out of the river, believe me. Write poetry, paint nature, get a greater connection to it. That will help you to appreciate it, get a greater sense of what is at stake, what we have lost, and what we have left to lose in this world. So thank you very much. Have a good day.